Well, welcome everybody. I thought with thou rushing wind that art so strong, this seemed quite a good hymn to actually start with. So let's sing, all creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia. As you can see and probably hear, if I move the camera just a little, all creatures of our God and King include Selwyn, who's sitting here singing away with us. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. Julie, do you want to read to us from Revelation 4? After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne with one seated on the throne. And the one seated there looks like Jasper and Cornelian. And around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Around the throne are 24 thrones and seated on the thrones are 24 elders dressed in white robes with golden crowns on their heads. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honour and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, one who lives forever and ever, 
the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A very short hymn for the middle. I'll explain why later. But it also seemed a hymn that fitted in very well with that vision that we have from Revelation. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've had enough of storms this week, even if here in Derby we managed to miss the worst of Eunice. Felt a bit of an anti-climax, really. As someone said, you can tell it was London that got the red warning. If you live in the south, stay at home. If you live in the north, just stick an extra coat on. People were comparing it to the 1987 Great Storm. when in those days, we were living in Huntingdon and we both slept through it. I cycled to the station for my normal morning train to London and was surprised when I found there were no trains running. I suppose that says something about how the world has changed in 35 years. Now I can look up the weather on my phone, or I can look at the live departure boards for any station in England. So on this occasion, I just rolled back over and had another hour in bed. 
modern technology has its uses. I wonder if Jesus was around now and asked the disciples to go and sail across the lake, whether Peter would check his phone and say, no, nah, there's a storm forecast. We're not going anywhere. Well, fishermen and they that go down to the sea in ships have always been experienced in checking the weather. After all, a lot depends on it. On the occasion that Luke records, there seems to have been no reason to delay your sailing. Jesus gets in a boat with his disciples, and one assumes that was just a normal occurrence. They lived beside the Sea of Galilee. They crisscrossed the lake quite regularly. And as several of the disciples were fishermen, no doubt a boat was the first century equivalent of a bus. I do wonder whether all the disciples were good sailors. Perhaps Matthew, the tax collector, hated it every time they got into the boat. No doubt they hated it even more when a gale swept down on the lake. Cold, wet, horrible. Then the boat starts filling with water and they were in danger. The thought of being in danger in a small boat does nothing for me. As I know I said before, the worst three hours of my life were being trapped on the Isle of Man ferry when the sea wasn't flat calm. Never again. Even my desire to spend a few days on the Isle of Man railways and trams, that's not enough to get me back on that boat. Jesus is asleep. Lucky him. The disciples are so frightened they wake him up. He may only be a carpenter and some of them are experienced fishermen, but they recognise his power. He is their leader, their Lord, so they need him. Master, master, we're perishing. He wakes up and rebukes the wind and the raging waves. I wonder what words he used. They cease. There is calm. No, I can't explain it. Humans cannot control the winds and the waves. So either it's a story that's been made up or Jesus really does have incredible power. I will go with the latter, although the logic in me says that no one can control the winds and the waves. Where is your faith? He asked them. Not, are you OK? Or, wow, that was quite some storm. Or perhaps he did ask that. And no one bothered to record it. Where is your faith? You've seen me at work. You've seen me heal. And yet you struggle with believing that I can calm the storm. It's all part of the same thing. God created a perfect world. The Old Testament reading that goes with today is Genesis chapter 2. When God created a world, he described as good. Every day, God saw that it was good. Then God created humanity, and it was very good. Later, all that gets spoiled. Evil destroys that relationship between humans and God. Creation is out of kilter. Everything wrong is caused by sin. Sickness, death, the anger of creation, everything that stops earth being heaven. Evil destroys paradise. Disease, dis-ease. The world is not at ease with itself. And Jesus can heal. He can put this right. He can calm the storm and put that to rights. Who then is this? That he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. Then Revelation gives us an image of heaven. There in heaven a door stood open. And what a vision. Jasper, Cornelian, a rainbow that looks like an emerald, white robes and gold crowns. Well, I'm sure most of us have been to the Tower of London and seen the crown jewels. And even though it's full of tourists, even though Julie arriving in a wheelchair always causes total chaos in the queue, it is still a most wonderful display. Jasper and Cornelian, and I haven't got a clue what sort of colours they are, but I have that vision, a vision of something amazing. Lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder, actually things that we're frightened of. We're frightened in the 21st century when we live in nice solid houses, when we know that it's physics, hot air meeting cold air. Imagine if you didn't know that, if you didn't have protection, you would be so afraid. But in heaven, there is no fear. Just think about that for a moment. In heaven, there is no fear. 
I'm sure I can say that none of us really live in fear. All of us have enough security that fear is not very high on our agenda. We cannot imagine the fear of some people in our city who do not know if they can afford to feed their children this week. We cannot imagine the fear of those who sleep on the streets. Will they be safe or will they be attacked? We cannot imagine the fear of those caught in a cycle of drugs or crime, or who owe money to people who demand it back with violence, or those who are frightened for their children or their partners or whatever. We cannot imagine the fear of thousands of people in refugee camps across this world, or those caught in the middle of the power play of various different regimes, those fighting to survive as the climate changes and the storms or the drought rages around them. Our Christian faith says that every human being is made in the image of God. Every human being is loved by God and every human being can be forgiven and make a new start because of the cross of Christ. And we have to hold that together. I want people to know forgiveness, to know and experience the love of Christ, to be part of the wonderful adventure that it is to be a Christian, to know the peace and the joy the worship, the friendship and the love. Last Friday, I went to see one of the baptism families that we're welcoming in a few weeks time. And they were so upbeat about it, really looking forward to coming to church, coming to their church, the church where their grandparents got married, where Big Brother was baptised, where they will come and celebrate again. I've got wedding couples who postponed from last year and they're so excited that this year they will get to walk down the aisle. We've had funerals recently where, despite the grief and the pain, we've seen people loving, caring, celebrating, supporting, praying. I even had a daughter who wrote to me after her mum's funeral telling me I was, and I quote, wise, humorous and kind, which is rather nice, though Julie thinks they must have got the wrong vicar. So we must love and serve and enjoy and share this wonderful life that God has given all humanity and show that the love of God is there in so much of this wonderful life. We must see this love in all sorts of wonderful people and celebrate and build up the love. Now I know that this world is evil. I know that human beings can be horrendous to each other. I know that the storms rage around us. But we know that even in the storm, there are marvellous people. Did you see the news story about this ambulance carrying a child to hospital in Aberdeen that got caught in the snow on Friday? And immediately, as you can see, there were people also stuck in the traffic jam who were out of their cars, pushing the ambulance through the snow, clearing the way ahead, making sure that it could get that child to hospital. That's just one of many examples of incredible human beings over the last few days. Well, in this life and in the life to come, we have nothing to fear because God is worthy to receive glory and honour and power. He will accept us all and our song will join the eternal song of heaven. Amen. The anthem that's been going round in my head for most of this week because of the weather has been this lovely setting of Psalm 107, They That Go Down to the Sea in Ships. You'll remember I put this little film together when we went to Orkney last summer, so I thought we might as well dust it down again. It is quite a long anthem at about six minutes or so, which is why we had a short hymn and we've cut the creed. It does also start quite quietly, but do sit and enjoy this and we'll plan for our summer holiday. Roll on.
There you are. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's pray. Lord God, our creator and redeemer, you are strong, powerful and giving, and you know us better than we know ourselves. It has been a week of storms, a winter week where sometimes spring has seemed a long way off. Keep us courageous in your name, we pray. Help us remember that with your love and your light in our hearts, all things are possible. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we give thanks for those who worked so hard this week. Those who have been there coping with the storms. Those in the NHS and care communities. Our teachers in the week before half term. May we find rest and strength as we move towards the summer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world situation, especially the situation in and around Ukraine. There are so many places where people live in fear, so we hold them in our love. Lord, in your mercy, hear <coughs> our prayer. We pray for all who are sick in body, mind and spirit. We ask that we are able to call upon you and feel your loving presence in our hearts. Comfort all of us, we pray. Draw us ever closer to you. Mend us in all that is broken and keep us strong as we try to go beyond the pain of a given moment. We ask too, Lord, that you remain close to those who feel the pain and loss of a loved one. We give our thanks for the lives of the departed. And we ask that you will give us grace to support those who mourn with our prayers, words of compassion or any practical help possible. We bring our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And your challenge for next week is to get the word ineffable into one of your conversations. <laughs> Let's have John playing for us. There we are then. 